In this lecture, we're going to cover section 6 and 7 of chapter 7, uh, discussing kinetic energy and work. All right, so now we want to look at the work done by a gravitational force. All right, and that's just going to be MGD cosine theta. All right, so remember, work was equal to force times distance cosine theta. Well, when the force is the force of gravity, we're just going to plug in our um, mg for that. So it's work is equal to mg, which is our force, force due to gravity, times the distance, times cosine of theta. All right, so a couple things we need to keep uh, track of. An applied force that lifts an object all right, so this is going to be an applied force going in the upward direction, and it's lifting the object. The object's displacement makes an angle of 180 degrees with the gravitational force of the object. So the applied force does positive work on the object. All right, so if the applied force is in the direction of the displacement, the, uh, uh, since the angle between those is zero, uh, you're going to have a positive work done. Now, in the second situation, an applied force lowers an object. All right, so you're applying a force upwards, but force of gravity is going to be, um, force of gravity is down, of course, and the, but the displacement is also down. So the displacement of the object makes an angle with the gravitational force. The applied force does negative work on the object, right? So if this is the applied force going up, even if I'm pushing it up, but it's still going down the work is going to be negative because the vectors are in the opposite directions. Okay, let's do a uh, sample problem. All right, an elevator cab of mass 500 kilograms is descending with speed, uh, initial velocity of 4.0 meters a second, when its supporting cable begins to slip, allowing it to fall with a constant acceleration of g over 5. And g in this case is just 9.8 meters a second squared. Okay. Now, during the fall, through a distance of 12 meters, what is the work done, WG, done on the cab by the gravitational force? Okay, so let's look at this. Um, we know that work due to gravity is going to be mgd cosine theta, which is our equation from last slide. So we can just go ahead and plug everything in. It's going to be the mass, which is going to be 500... Uh, kilograms times the displacement of 12 meters, which should be times gravity, mg, so this is just going to be 9.8 meters a second squared, times the displacement, which is 12 meters, times the cosine of the angle. Well, in this case, the angle is just going to be zero because gravi gravity is pulling down and the displacement is going down. So they're in the same direction, as you can see over here. You have gravity going down and displacement going down in the same direction. All right, so this is just going to be one. So the work due to gravity is going to be 5.88 times 10 to the fourth joules. Now in part B, it's saying during this 12 meter fall, what's the work WT done on the cab by, um, by the upward pull of the tension? All right, so here we would ex probably expect negative work because you have tension going up and the displacement's down, so you're going to have negative work done by the tension in the strain. All right, so that's what we would expect. So let's first write what tension is, and that's just going to be, so if we do our F is equal to MA, um, this is on the left side, it's the summation of forces, so that's just tension minus the force of gravity. Right, this is just our free body got diagram, so tension's going up, force of gravity is going down. That's going to be equal to mass times the acceleration of the cab. All right. Now if I want to rearrange for tension, because we're going to need that in a second, we want to do, it's just going to be mass times acceleration plus Fg. All I did was move Fg onto the other side. Simplifying that, since we know Fg is just mg, this is going to be m times the acceleration plus g. All right, we just factored out the m there. All right, so our work due to tension is just going to be, now since tension is our force, it's going to be Td cosine theta. All right, that's our equation for work. Plug in tension for the force. We can plug in what we have for tension, so that's just going to be m a plus g times 
the distance times cosine theta. Okay. So now we can plug in what we know for each of these variables. All right. So our work due to tension is then going to be m minus g over 5, because that's the acceleration that they give us up here. Right? It's accelerating constantly downward. So that, that's why we put in the negative sign there. Plus g times d cosine theta. This just equals 4 over 5 m g d cosine theta. Now we can go and plug in everything for this equation. So we have our work from the tension is going to be 4 fifths times our weight, or our uh, mass rather, which is 500 kilograms, times 9.8 meters a second squared, times 12, and then this time it's going to be times the cosine of 180, because there's 180 degrees between the tension and the force, or the force of, uh, uh, or excuse me, the tension and the displacement. All right, so here's our, here's our angle of 180 here. Okay, so just solving this out, we get that our work from tension is going to be negative, uh, oops, negative 4.70 times 10 to the fourth joules. Right. So here we have a negative, negative work being done by the tension. All right. Over here, we had positive work being done by gravity. All right, so continuing on with the same example, in part C, it's asking what's the network uh, W done on the cab during the fall? All right, so the network is just going to be adding the works together, it's just the, the summation of work. All right, so this total work is going to be a work from gravity plus work due to the tension. Oops. So that's going to equal. 5.88 times 10 to the 4th joules minus 4.70 because we had negative work from the tension times uh, 10 to the 4th joules and we get a result for work it's going to be 1.18 times 10 to the 4th joules right, so that's our total work being done on the cab. All right, lastly, what's the cab's kinetic energy at the end of this 12 meter fall? All right, it'd be helpful to know how much energy it has at the end, and um, we could find out how fast it's going to be going as well. All right, so um, we know that our initial kinetic energy is just one half mv times the initial velocity squared, and we're given what the initial velocity is. Work, our work kinetic energy theorem, is work is equal to the change in kinetic energy, right, which is just kf minus ki, right, final minus initial. Rearranging this equation and solving for the final kinetic energy, because that's what we want to know, that's just simply going to be the initial kinetic energy plus work. Right. So writing that out, we see that it's, uh, so that would just be 1 half mv initial squared plus the work. So our final kinetic energy is going to be 1 half times the mass, which is 500 kilograms, times the velocity, which is 4.0 meters a second squared, and uh, excuse me, meters a second initially, then that's squared from the equation, plus 1.18 times 10 to the fourth joules. So what we end up with, our final kinetic energy, is 1.58 times 10 to the fourth joules, or roughly 16 kilojoules. Right, and then from this, we could find um, the velocity if we wanted to. We would just set this equal to 1 half mv squared and figure out what that final velocity was. All right, moving on. So work can also be done by spring force. 
Now, Hooke's law is going to be a good approximation for many springs. The force from a spring is proportional to the displacement of the free end of its moving position um, when the spring is in the relaxed state. So let's say, for instance, um, I had a spring here. And this is what its relaxed state would look like. And then I had another spring below it that was compressed to that. All right. This x in the equation here is going to be the distance that it moves. So the distance from its relaxed point. This is going to be x. Oops. Right. How much the spring moves. And k is just going to be uh, the spring constant. And it's a measure of how stiff the spring is. All right. The minus sign indicates that the direction of the spring force is always going is always in the opposite direction of the displacement of the spring's free end. All right, so that's where the negative sign comes from. All right, so if, if you're pushing it in, the displacement's in this direction, and the force is in that direction. All right, so you're going to get this negative sign. Um, the network, WS, done by a spring when it has a distortion from xi to xf, so this is just our initial position to the final position, so we can, you know, we can say this was xi and this is xf. The work done by the spring is going to be shown by this equation. The work is equal to oops, minus from xi to xf, so it's the integral from xi to xf, which is uh, the displacement of, of the spring. Um, we go, we'll keep the negative in here for now. That's just, so this is going to be the force only in the x direction, or only in the direction of um, the spring itself, times dx. All right, so we're integrating, um, we're integrating the work, we're looking at how much force is being applied throughout this entire distance. So that's why we have this integral here. All right. So simplifying this so we can maybe, uh, so we can use it, our work is just going to be the integral over the displacement. And we can plug in for our fx there, which is the force of the spring. So it's minus kx, and that x is actually a variable, dx. All right. Simplifying this to take the integral, we can pull the negative k out. So we just have the integral from xi to xf of x dx. And that ends up just being a simple integral. Right? When you take the integral, you take it, um, you increase the exponent by 1, and then you, you divide by that exponent. Right, so what that would look like is if I would increase this x by, exponent by 1, since it's x to the 1 right now, that would be x to the 2, so it would be x squared. And then I would divide by 1 half, because that's the new exponent. Or divide, yeah, divide by 2, rather, so I would multiply by 1 half. All right, so this is going to look like if I keep that negative kx there, and I pull what we divided by out from the integral, so we have negative 1 half k, uh, 1 half k, rather. And then this is going to be multiplied by x squared over a range of x naught to xf, because those are our bounds of integration. Now, that basically says that we take the top one minus the bottom one. All right, so what that would look like is we have, again, the minus 1 half k before. And then plugging these values in for the x squared, you just get x x squared minus xi squared. Okay, So our final equation for um, the work done by the spring is just going to be 1 half kx initial squared minus 1 half kx final squared. Okay. So work is going to be positive if the block ends up closer to the relaxed position than it was initially. And it's going to be negative if the block ends up further away. All right, so as I said, as we're compressing it, we're going to be doing negative work because the displacement's going to be to the left and the force is pushing it to the right. However, if, if, the, um, if it was being uncompressed, so going from here to here to in the right direction, that's going to be in the same direction of the force. So that's going to be positive work. 
Now, if the uh, if it's zero, if the block ends up at the same distance from uh, x is equal to zero, so it's the same distance from the initial point. So, for instance, if I took, if I had it stretched out all the way over to here, and I went to here, right, the, um, the total amount of work is going to be zero, because you're going to do some work to get it to here, and then you're going to do, uh, so this is going to be negative work, and then you're going to be doing positive work as you get the rest of the way. Okay, so let's do one example for this. Um, a, cubic, a cumin canister of mass 0.4 kilograms slides across a horizontal frictionless counter with a speed of 0.5 meters a second. It then runs into and compresses a spring of spring constant K is equal to 750 newtons divided by meters. When the canister is momentarily stopped by the spring, by what distance D is the spring compressed? All right, so you have this object sliding towards the spring. At some point it hits the spring and then it compresses it some amount of distance. We want to know how much distance is it going to compress the spring. All right, so we're going to start with our work energy theorem. All right. uh, and if you remember, that's just the change in K is equal to work. So our change in kinetic energy is going to equal, oops, our change in kinetic energy is just going to be equal to our uh, result that we just found for what the work was. And since we know that the initial um, is going to be zero, right, because it's, it's starting from some initial position that is unrelaxed, right, so that's going to be our initial. Um, so really the, the, the full thing written out, again, if I, if I take this, is going to be one-half k, kd. Excuse me, we'll use x in this case. kxi squared minus one half kxf squared, right? That was our result from last time. Um, this initial position is zero, right? So this is just going to go to zero. And you see that our uh, change in kinetic energy is then going to just be equal to negative one half kxf squared. All right, but we also know that the final kinetic energy is going to be zero because it's coming to a stop momentarily. As the spring compresses in this direction, right here is coming to a stop. So this final kinetic energy is also zero. So we have zero minus the initial kinetic energy is equal to one half kx times the final distance or the final displacement. And that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find this xf, the final um, displacement or the, or the distance. All right, so this xf is then going to just equal um, the velocity times the square root of m divided by k. So all we really did was take this equation and solved for um, xf. And we plugged in what we knew for the initial kinetic energy. And that gets us 0 0.5 meters a second times the square root of 0 0.40 kilograms divided by 750 newtons per meter. Oops. So our final displacement, or our distance, is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2 meters, right? which is roughly 1.2 centimeters. All right, that's it for this lecture. We'll pick it up next time.